Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you're all well. Morning, morning. Lots of people arriving nice and early. Great to have you back with us for another session. We've got Stuart Beveridge with me from Seascape. And I'm Sam from Sight and Sound Technology. Um, some of you might have seen us before. If you've not, hello and welcome. Yeah, it's great to have another um, really popular session uh, for you all today. Uh, we've got yeah, we've got lots lots of interest in this session. Lots of people registered, which is which is always really really encouraging. So thank you all for joining us. And we will have um, my colleague Stuart Lawler will also be joining us from Sight and Sound Technology as well very shortly. But good morning. Lots of familiar names I can see. Um, some unfamiliar as well. So yeah, really, really good to have you all with us. If you are new as well, um, yeah, e even better. Thank you for coming along to the social hub. Um, very good. Uh, Stuart Beveridge, how are you? Are you well? Yes, I'm not too bad at all, Sam. And, and, and you know, unusually for me, my video is, is on because I need it for the demonstration today. So yeah, um, we... we we're not used to seeing you actually. Yeah, yeah they're used is... to seeing your handsome face and then I <laughs> pop up and things go downhill quickly, don't they? So... Yeah, look, there's nothing handsome about this face at the minute. I've got this <laughs> awful beard, uh, which yeah, it's not 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 a good look in the summer. Uh, no, no, but it is. It's good to see you. Yeah, we're, we're used to hearing your your lovely yeah, five tones, five yeah. dulcet, yeah, dulcet five accent. Scottish but, um, tones. Yeah, it's good to actually see <laughs> your face today. Um, yeah, so Stuart Beveridge is actually going to be giving us a, a live demo of of, of the Navi Belt um, and the Ultra Cane as well. Yes, yeah. going to bring the Ultra Cane yeah. in slightly yeah. as well. My main focus is on the Navi Belt, but yeah. I do want to bring the Ultra Cane in because it's a trail event. So yeah, well that's you know yeah really exciting. Obviously, as a, <clears> a you know a, a blind user yourself, um, this is the perfect um, opportunity to really test the test the tech, which is great. Um, Good. So we, before we officially kick off, as always, just to run through um, a few parish notices. Um, if you've joined us before, I'm sorry for repeating myself if you haven't. Um, so this is the social hub and it really is an interactive, you know, quite informal um, session that we really want you to get involved with. Um, so please do share any comments, opinions, observations and experiences um, of, of using either this tech, similar tech, or any assistive technology that you would like to discuss and share with the group, um, please do get involved. And you can do that a couple of ways. You can do that by either popping your comments and questions in the chat box, and you can use uh, Alt and H, uh, if you're using a screen reader on a Windows machine or Command and H on a Mac, or you can raise your virtual hand and you can actually um, speak to us, speak to the group and voice your questions and comments and you can do that by using alt and y or command and y um, if you're using a screen reader very good this session is being recorded as always it will be live on youtube later today so you can share it with colleagues friends family whoever it may be um, if you do need to leave because you're at work uh, you can catch up on it later on um, all of our social obsessions are available on our youtube channel and um, we've got a really impressive collection over the last um, 18 months so it's yeah so so please do catch up on on the youtube channel if you can good now i'm just going to uh find stuart lawler before we uh, yeah we had some technical issues we did morning. yeah <coughs> always stuart, stuart, stuart <laughs> was unable to to log in so i'm, I'm hoping that he's arrived and i'll upgrade him anyway we'll worry about that later <laughs> Good. So we'll kick off. The numbers have, have leveled off, which is really, really good. Um, yeah. So Navi Belt and Ultra Cane. So, so, so Stuart, before obviously you dive into the 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 the, the, um, the demo and and, yeah. and you, you give us a, a real sort of working through of the, the devices, just give us a sort of a, a very brief overview of, of of what these devices are and what they're capable of. 
Okay, so the, the ultra cane, I'll start with this one because it's easier. It's been around for years, um, the ultra cane. I think it's actually been around for almost 10 years, um, if I'm speaking, you know, correctly there. And what I think of the ultra cane is it's a very, quite a basic upgrade on, you know, the traditional white cane. But it's really quite fascinating because what it does is it detects obstacles at both ground level and head level as well through two tactile buttons on the front of the cane that your thumb goes over. And what happens is through haptic feedback, so through vibration feedback, it tells you when you're approaching an obstacle and you can set it to either two metres. So I use it at two metres if I'm indoors and four metres if I am outdoors. And what happens is you, you use the, the, you know, the traditional cane um, technique. So you sweep from side to side. It has a nice roly tip on the end. And when you're approaching an obstacle, depending on the distance you've set it to, it will start to vibrate. Either one of the, the lower button will vibrate if it's at ground level, and the higher button, the button above it, will vibrate if the obstacle's at head level. So hopefully you're, you can hear already why I, I like this device. Um, and the closer you get to the obstacle, the faster, the more intense the vibration becomes. So if you're really close to the obstacle, the vibration does go a bit haywire, but you should, with a bit of practice, then be able to avoid that obstacle. And that's the reason I like it, because you know, with the, the normal traditional cane, I don't know there's anything there, and then I'm hitting something and the cane gets stuck and, and all the rest of it. But with the ultra cane, that is now a thing of the past. And I use it, I use it quite a lot. I used to use it when I used to go up the woods um, at work with my guide dog at lunchtime, because with the normal cane, every time I was going up the woods, I kept hitting my head on overhanging branches, you know, using the normal cane, but not anymore because the ultra cane it, it even picks up something as thin as overhanging branches at head height. So it's really quite cool. Um, the navy belt is ingenious. The, the navy belt, so is, it's a belt that goes around your waist and it's designed to get you to a specific destination. It does a lot more than that. You know, it has a compass in there and you feel vibrations all around your body depending on the direction you need to go. So again, it's another haptic feedback device, but I'm not going to say too much more about the navy belt just now because I want to really go into the guts of it. Um, yeah. for want of a better word and at a moment or two. So that's no, a quick that's, overview. No, that's good. That's sort of in a nutshell what you know what 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 we are going to be exploring today. And uh and uh and you have these are tried and tested out there. So you've tested these in different these environments are tried already. And tested. And, yes, yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll give my good. final thoughts at the end on that. So good. Good. And before we do kick off again with the demo with with Stuart Lawler has, has managed to join us. Morning Stuart. Hey. Heck, issues. They're all over the place. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning, Sam, and good morning, Stuart. Hey, Stuart. And, uh, hey, yeah. Hi, Stuart. Uh, sorry for being late. I have no late note, <laughs> so apologies. Yeah, my card. I'm looking forward to learning all about this technology, Stuart. You're the, the guru when it comes to this stuff. Uh, it's not something I have experienced before. And we do have something at the end, uh, Stuart. We do. We want people to stay for. And the great yeah. thing is Sam Colson has no clue what we're talking about. He doesn't. So please stay till the very what? end of the session. It's a We've got about, there's about five <laughs> minutes of something happening at the end of today's session, but please make sure you stay because Stuart and myself have something we want to do yeah. that Sam knows nothing about. It sounds ominous. I'm, uh, there you go. Just sit tight. Now sit I'm tight. nervous. <clears throat> now I'm nervous. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I want to stick around though. Um, but anyway, you we'll see. Um, very good. Okay. That's exciting. Um, Great, yeah. Well, thanks again, to Stuart, for coming and joining us again. Um, but yeah, so so any if we have any any cane users or mobility instructors or anybody that that, that works in in that field, uh, please do share your experiences as well of, of of either using, you know, a similar device. Um, we have explored um, um, different canes in the past, haven't we? We've we've explored um, recently. The WeWalk, yeah, the WeWalk. Really cool. yeah, 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 and. Um, 
you know, I know there are alternatives as well. Um, but if anybody mm. yeah, wants to share their experiences of, of, of using, um, you know, similar devices, please do um, pop your thoughts in the chat box. Um, but yeah, the Navi Belt is unique and I'm, yeah, I'm very excited to see your, your demonstration, Stuart. So uh, yeah, over to you. Yes, it's, it's ingenious and I don't say that lightly, the Navi Belt. So <clears throat> um, I'm just crack on it. I'm just go through a few things before I start demonstrating the Navi Belt. I'll give a quick overview and I'll just say I will need to tweak my video camera a wee bit. I'm not comfortable with, with this in the sense that, you know, with that I don't have any sight at all. So Sam's going to have to help me at some point, but just bear with me, guys. Always, always good. We've already tested it and everything works fine. So I'll just crack on. So we'll start with the Navi Belt. So I purchased the Navi Belt back in May from Computer Room Services here in the UK. They are the people who sell the, the Navi Belt. Uh, Steve Nutt, I'm sure, is familiar to a lot of people. And since then, I've used it almost every day. And it was developed by a com with a companion app uh, by a German company called Field Space. So, you know, film as in film the desk with your hand and then space, S-P-A-C-E, Field Space. And the most concise way of putting it is the Navi belt is a piece of wearable technology and it's a belt that tells you where to go. I can't put it really any more simply than that. So when wearing the belt, you pick up on directions and you know, different other pieces of information through different vibration patterns around your entire waist. And to be honest, you really do need to wear one of these to fully understand how this works, but I'll do my best to explain it during the remaining part of uh, this demonstration. And before I really get into the demo, I just want to highlight some features of the belt. What, what can it actually do? So when you first receive the belt, it is not connected to the Film Space Companion app. It's a standalone device. So at this stage, when you first turn it on, <clears throat> you can either use it as a compass, so it does have a built-in com compass, or most interestingly, you can use it to help you cross the road. So I'm going to have fun with this later on. It really is an interesting um, you know, piece of tech that's helping you cross the road in a straight line. Um, and when you connect it to your smartphone, you can then use it to guide you to a specific destination, again, all through different vibrations around your body. And I'm going to cover all of this now. Uh, my plan is to start by giving a physical description of the Navi belt, and I'll then demonstrate um, the, the features it uses when it is not connected to your smartphone, so the compass and the road crossing modes. We'll bring the ultra cane in for a, a cameo at this point, and I will then stop and take questions. And I then want to demonstrate how the companion app, the Field Space app, works alongside the Navi Belt. And I'll finish with some final thoughts and notes. And if we do have time, we can go through the ultra cane in a wee bit more detail. Um, I'm itching to get going <clears throat> with this demo, but I do want to make a couple of things absolutely clear first. The, Na <clears throat> the Navi Belt is an orientation aid. It is absolutely not, absolutely not a mobility aid. So you will still need to use this belt alongside your traditional you know, mobility aid, such as a cane or a guide dog. And again, <clears throat> you do need good mobility and orientation skills to, to use this belt as well. And also, just to be absolutely clear, the Navi belt is not an obstacle detector. Its main purpose is to help you navigate and explore places safely, and I would say to increase your confidence when out and about as well. It's certainly done that for me at any rate. So I'll do a physical description of the belt now. So I'm just going to go and get it. And Sam, if I need to adjust some video here. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. So we have the belt. <clears throat> now, if I hold it up, Sam, let's just see. Can we can we see it? Yeah, if you just if you just move over to the left slightly, uh, Stuart, that'd be ideal. Uh, 
There we go. Yeah, we can see that. That's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So can you see the bell? Turn it speed control. We can. Yeah, we can see the control pad there. Yeah. So I've got the belt fastened, um, and on the the side where my my pinky is, you can see a kind of, it's like a a rectangular control box. Mm -hmm. And this is the brain of the Navi belt. And then around the the entire belt, as I say, I've got it fastened, so it should look like a big circle for the parts you can see anyway. Mm -hmm. There are 16 different vibration motors. So through these vibration motors, that's where you feel the the information, the haptic feedback from the belt. And it's fastened, you can hear that, it's actually fastened through a Velcro fastener, so it's nice and easy to, you know, open and shut. And now, Sam, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but just let me see if I can... if If we can't see this, it doesn't matter. Sam, can you see a green marker? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yes. we can We can see that. So, so what I'm feeling, there's a vibration motor directly under my finger and thumb. And just above it, there is it's just a, a small sort of tactile, uh, they've just cut a tiny sort of tactile tag um, out of the belt, just above the, the vibration motor. And that is a, a green marker for those who can see it. And that is the central vibration motor of the belt. So when I wear the belt in a few sec in a few minutes, that tactile tag above the vibration motor, the central vibration motor, needs to be positioned in the center of my stomach, so that then you can feel all of the different vibrations in the, the correct places. So that's a quick overview there of of the belt. And by the way, it's quite the, the material is it's stretchy it's breathable it's i mean I, I don't know how heavy the belt is but when i'm wearing it i actually forget i'm wearing it you know that that really is as light as that you know I, i've sat in a chair for an hour and a half and i forgot i had it on one time um you know and even when you, you're walking around if you weren't feeling vibrations you'd forget it was there you know it just is so lightweight it's so comfortable um, and just you know, it's so convenient. Um, and it's and Velcro, is it, Stuart? It's ve- the, the fastener's Velcro, and then I'm not quite sure what the the, the actual material is. Um, yeah. Sam, it, it's hard to explain what the material is. As you really need to get your hands on one of these to. Yeah. Um, but yeah. as I say, the material is elastic. It is stretchy, as oh, you good. will see um, in a moment. Is that okay? Does that make? Great. No, no, no that's good. Yeah. As I say, any question, just chime in. Um, but the, the main part of the belt, uh, this is its brain. This is a control panel. Are, are we seeing that okay, Sam? The, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And on the control panel, I, I don't know if we can see, but it's in a little pocket. So um, I think that's to kind of keep the control panel safe, you know, because there is so much in here. As I say, the compass is in there, the battery, all the, the, the circuitry, etc. And on the front of the control panel, you have four buttons. So you have a top button, you have a button on its own, and then underneath you have a row of three other buttons in a a horizontal line. And the top button is the compass button. So that gives you, you know, information about the compass and helps you cross the road. Again, I'll demonstrate that at the moment. In a moment, I'm just trying to orientate people with the, you know, get people familiar with the, the workings of the belt. So you've got the compass button, And then underneath, you've got a row of three buttons. So directly underneath the compass button, you have a favourite button. So if I was to press this button when the belt was connected to my phone, I've got it to set set to automatically guide me back to my home. So wherever I am, when I'm out and about, if if this belt was connected to my phone and I was to press the favourite button, it would automatically start taking information from the phone and try and guide and tell me how to get back home to my address. Um, And again, to the right of that, in the row of three, um, the next button along is the play, I just call it the pause resume button, actually, because you can pause the vibrations when you're out and about. So um, the other day I was out with the belt and I got stopped in the street, as I do, because I have a guide dog, so people stop and talk to me. And just to keep the vibrations from, you know, going on and on, I just pressed this pause button, 
And what it did is it actually just stopped the vibration until I was ready to go again. And then I just pressed the, the play pause button again and it started to guide me, you know, back on route. And then the final button on the far right is the on off button. And you use that to obviously turn the belt on and off. And you can also use it to get the battery percentage of the belt as well, which we're going to go through. I'll go through all of this now and then I'll take some questions. So I'm going to stand up, Sam, and I'm going to I'm going to have to adjust this camera arm tie. Um, yeah. So I think it was about there, was it, Sam? Let's try that. You know, stand back a little. Yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. That, that, that seems fine at the moment. If, you uh, want if to it's not great, just let me know and I will. We're, we're actually doing better than I thought here. So, <laughs> so I've got the belt in my hand and I have one of the, the end nearest the control panel. And what I do is I put it around my waist. Are, are you seeing this? Sam? Yeah, yeah, just do it. It might be slightly more helpful if you just stand back slightly. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, of course. A couple of paces. Yeah, that, that's good. That's excellent. Yeah. Now, it's going around my waist. Now, I don't know if you can see this, Sam, but it's not fastening. It's actually, it's not fitting around my waist. <laughs> um, and it's not because I'm too big for the belt. It's because it stretches. So it comes in four sizes. You have, an, so if you decide to go for one of these belts, you're going to have to measure your waist size first. Um, and I did that through my Amazon Echo. I just measured inches and then asked it what it was in centimetres because it comes in four sizes. So you have extra small, and that is between 70 and 80 centimetres. Then you have small, which is me, and that's between 80 and 92 centimetres. Then you have medium, which is between 92 and 105 centimetres. And then you have large, which is between 105 and 125 centimetres. So these are the, the four sizes of belts. So it is quite specific requirements. So you do need to do a wee bit of preparation before you buy one of these things. So as I say, when I first bought it and I put it on, I was trying to put it on and I went, oh no, I've ordered the wrong size. And I was despairing. But what it does, remember I said, it stretches. So if I just stretch it out, and it goes round my waist, and I just velcro it in place, and that's it on. How's that looking, Sam? Is that okay? Oh, ex excellent. It suits yeah, you. Yeah, so we're, we're modelling the Navi belt now. <laughs> so, um, and did you notice that, did you notice I'm already looking at the front, my hands are already going to the front of the Navi belt, because remember that green marker? I showed you the wee tag above the central vibration motor. I'm automatically, I'm so used to wearing it every day, I've now positioned it so that this that wee green marker, that you know, central motor, is directly in the center of my stomach. That is your central point when you're wearing the belt. You must get that correct, or you're going, you're not going to have a very good experience. So it's now on, and the control panel sits directly above my right hand pocket. So it's sitting basically, it's directly above the jeans pocket on my right hand side at the front. And automatically, as I say, I'm so used to it, my hand is on the four tactile buttons. So the first thing we want to do is turn the Navi belt on. So I go to the, the far right of the row of three, and that's, remember, is the on-off button. So I just press it and hold it down for about maybe two, three seconds. And I'm feeling a vibration and the vibration is going all around my waist. It's just went in a 360 degree, you know, circle around my waist. It's went round twice. And then I felt a double vibration in the, the central motor, right on the, in the center of my stomach. And that means that the Navi belt is on and ready to use. And at the moment, it's not connected to my iPhone. So it's actually vibrating on either side of me at the same time. It's like it, Steve Nutt usually says, it's like it's giving you a, a dig in the ribs to tell me, you know, right, I'm ready to go, connect me to your iPhone or, you know, do what you, use the compass or something like that. So I'm getting a dig in the ribs at the moment, but what I usually do before I do anything else, I need to know how much charge is in the Navi belt before I go out and use it because I don't want the thing dying you know, when I'm on a route and I'm halfway down the road and then the thing cuts out, that's not good. 
So what I do is I just very, very briefly, again, go back to that on off button on the far right, and I just press it very, very quickly. And what that does, it's going to give me the battery percentage. So I'm pressing it now. And what I'm feeling is, it's again went in a circle all the way around my body and it's hit that central vibration motor. So because it's went all the way around my body, I know that I've got 100% battery. I know that I'm in, you know, I know that it's fully charged. If I press that button and it went halfway around my body and I felt it, the vibration stop at, you know, my lower back, then I would know it was only half full. Hope that's making sense. But again, I'm happy to take questions on it as we go, but it, it should make sense. So that's how to get the battery. In terms of battery, by the way, it takes a couple of hours to charge, fully charge, but then you get at least, they say in the user guide, you get around eight hours of use now. That's if you were to be using it continuously. When I'm not using it, I just turn it off, you know, to, to save the power. And as I say, I've had it from me and I've I only had to charge it two or three times. But again, I'm only going, you know, very, very specific, you know, roots at the moment, which are, are growing as I become more confident with it. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> so that is how to get the battery and some of the turning the belt on and off. Now, as I say, let's go through some of the features that you can do with this belt. So the compass button, remember, is the, this is the one we're going to focus on now. It's the, the only button on its own um, above the row of three. And if I was to press this button once, what it does is it activates a compass and it will always vibrate in the direction of north. So this is going to be really good for mobility instructors or you know people who have a bit of a, maybe a, a, a poor sense of direction, for want of a, a, a better phrase. Um, this might really help them. So let me give an example. If I just press the compass button once and I'm feeling a vibration at my back, at the, on my lower back at the moment, and it's a continuous vibration. It doesn't stop the vibration. So I know that north is at my lower back. So I'm facing south because if I was facing no, if I was in the north direction, I would feel it in that central motor where you know the, the tag is. Hope that makes sense again. I'm sure it will. So as long as I feel the direction north in the center of my stomach, I know I'm going north. But because it's at my back, I know I'm, well, I'm well and truly out. I'm actually heading south. But as I turn, the vibration is moving. So now I'm feeling my vibration on my left-hand side. So north is directly on my left, so I know that I'm facing east. And if I turn back, and that's me again now back in the, the direction where, where I started, and again, I'm feeling the, the north direction at my lower back. So again, I know I'm, I'm facing in the south direction. Sam, is that making sense? Perfect. Yes. yes. Good. Now, the next thing before I take questions, and this is a thing I really am quite excited about. How many people, and I know Stuart has been asked this question, the Stuart L has been asked this question by Steve Nutt in the past. How many people have trouble walking in a straight line when they're crossing the road. I'm just going to pause the, the bell here because that vibration is annoying me. Um, <clears throat> how many people have trouble going in a straight line when they're walking across the road using a cane? I know I do. Me too, now, absolutely. Hands up. Yes, hand. exactly. Well, I don't have that problem anymore and I have tested it with the Navi bell. Um, now, the thing is, I have the best guide dog in the world. So going in a straight line, that, that's child's play. You know, it's not an issue. But... That's because I have a guide dog. If I didn't have a guide dog and use a cane, I, I could guarantee you, and it has happened many a time, I have ended up in the middle of the main road. I've lost all sense of direction, but that doesn't happen anymore because of the Navi Bell. Now, remember I said you do need good orientation and mobility skills. So if I was using you know, my ultra cane, I would have to indent round the corner and angle myself up in the straight line, you know, by using the cane to film the straight line. And then what I would do, once I know I was in the straight line, I would press the compass button twice. And what that would do is it would then vibrate a repeating vibration. So not a constant vibration, a repeating vibration 
in the central motor where you know the, the V tag is, the V green tag, and that has got me then anchored in a straight line. And if I was to deviate from that straight line, the, the vibration would move. So I'm going to just demonstrate that in a moment. That in fact, I'm demonstrating now before I get the ultra cane. So I'll press the button twice, the compass button twice. And what's happening is the vibe, I'm feeling a vibration in my, you know, the, the central, um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna do some, there we go. So I'm feeling a repeating, a pulsing vibration in the central motor, straight in the middle of my stomach. And I start walking, yep, I'm still going straight. Oh, and now I've veered. And as soon as I've veered, the point, the vibration point has actually moved to my left because I've actually veered to the right. So my straight line is now on the left. So I need to veer back to the left that I'm, in, I'm back in my straight line again. If I turn a bit to the left, I'm veering again and I'm veering badly because now the vibration is moving towards the right hand side of my waist. So I'm really going off course. So straight away, I know I'm going off course and I can just turn back and I'm feeling the vibration back again in the straight line in the middle of my stomach. So again, hope that all makes sense. And just before I take questions, um, <clears throat> there is one thing I forgot to, to mention is the pause button, you can increase and decrease the vibration intensity of the belt um, when it's not connected to the iPhone by pressing the pause button. And then between pressing the compass button, they'll increase the vibration intensity and the, the favourite button underneath the compass button will decrease the vibration intensity. So you would want to do that to have a good comfortable um, experience of the Navi Bell, just to get the right vibration that suits you. You don't want it too strong, but you, know, you don't want it too weak either. And just before I take questions, I'm just reading off Sam, don't forget. Here is, Am I in a good position, Sam? Or we? Okay. You could a little bit further back. A little bit further back. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So in my hands now, I have an ultra cane, and I just thought I'd bring it in for a wee cameo at this stage because this is the whole point of showing you this road crossing mode. Because as I say, best guide dog in the world. Usually, I wouldn't use the ultra cane because of confidence, but now I have this navy belt. Remember, it's not an obstacle detector. But if I have it going hand in hand, if you like, side by side with the ultra cane, then I'll be feeling even more vibrations through my hand, but it will tell me when I'm approaching obstacles as well. So, for example, if there was a parked car in the middle of the road when I'm going in my straight line, the ultra cane will tell me that I'm, you know, going to, there's an obstacle coming up, and then it would be up to my mobility skills to, you know, get safely around that, whatever it was, say it was a parked car. So I'll just quickly open them up. Just to, so it's a nice foldable cane as always, and I, you can get it in different sizes. Stuart. Sam, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, are you able to stand back a little bit? Yeah. A little bit further back, just so we can see the full. Yeah, there you go, that's, that's yeah, that's much better. Yeah, so I'm holding the ultra cane, and <clears throat> there are two, there's actually two sensors that you don't want to be touching them, but there's a sensor at the bottom of the handle, which points down at the ground. So that's for, you know, obstacles at ground level. And then there's another sensor just above it. And when you're holding the ultra cane in the, direct, in the correct position, um, the sensor above it's pointing up, you know, at head level. So it's actually looking for anything above your chest and head height. And then on the ultra cane, there is a tiny switch um, at the back. And if I just push the switch down, I hear a beep. And it's at, now I've turned it on and I'm only in two meter mode and it's picking up my desk. And my desk is big enough that it's picking it up at, you know, both low level and high level. So the two buttons are going, they're going a bit haywire under my thumb at the moment because it's obviously picking up that there's a big obstacle in my way. And as I walk forward towards the desk, oh, God, it's going absolutely mad. And I've actually just hit the desk. But, and you know, in the real world, I wouldn't have hit the desk. I would have actually, you know, been, been happy enough to, to avoid that. If I go back away from the desk, I'm just moving. 
As soon as I move the cane away from the base, the vibrations have actually stopped. Um, and again, you would just use your usual sweep from side to side, your usual cane technique. And so if I was to sweep it to the right, it's actually not vibrating anymore. Oh, it is because my guide dog's just lay down. So it's picking up my guide dog now. Um, but again, it show, hopefully shows you the effectiveness of it. You know, so I know my, there's something on the right hand side. I really don't want to be going there. So I would probably take a side step, you know, away from that. Again, sweep back to the middle and it's picking up my desk. So again, you really need to start slowing down. And then if I sweep to the left, I'm very close to my window. So it's, 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 picking, it's going haywire in the house at the moment. But again, if there was nothing on the left, then the ultracade would just wouldn't feel any vibration at all. So if it's getting the part where you don't feel any vibration, then you know you can walk safely in that direction. And just finally on the ultracane, Sam, are you seeing me? You know, my hand on the top of the, the cane. Um, either, either step back a little bit, or just sort of um, angle the cane down a little bit. Yeah, that that's better, much better. Yeah. yeah, yeah thank cool. you. So I've got my, my left thumb. I've opened up a wee a wee flap on the top of the ultra cane, and this is what I really like about it. Um, it's got a door in the top, and it's a bit tricky <laughs> to get the door open. But once you get the door open. Inside the ultra cane, it actually only takes two AA batteries, so it doesn't even need to charge. You don't need to charge this thing. You know, it just, it, as I say, it takes two AA batteries. The, the last, eight, if you get the Duracell batteries, I don't want to change them, you know, once or twice. Um, so I really like it. I, I think it's a really future-proof um, mobility aid because, you know, you're never going to, all you need to do is change the batteries from time to time, and it will tell you when the batteries are running out. So um, between the Navi belt and possibly in time for me using the ultra cane, I might not have to rely on my guide dog as much. That was the, the main point of this demonstration. So I think I'm going to stop, Sam, and I'm going to take questions. Just bear with me and I'm going to get my chair back in place and I'll take um, the, the ultra cane away as well. No problem. Oh. Thank you. Stuart, I'm hoping that um, everybody can still hear me. I, I'm having tech issues now as well. My internet's oh, no. decided to, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's not not behaving. Um, so hence why I've turned off my camera. Um, so apologies, everyone, but I'm still here. Um, very good. Thank you, Stuart. That's yeah, uh, fascinating. Um, and we have lots and lots of questions. Uh, yeah, that, okay. that's a good angle. We can we can see you. Uh, See you again. Um, yeah, lots of questions queued up. Um, so thank you, everybody. For, Some of uh, them I might not take just because I want to get to it in the next part of the demo, but, you yep. know, bear with me. I'll, I'll take the questions anyway and see. Yeah. Sam, is, I, Sam is, it, is it possible I could jump in with a quick question for Stuart? Just yeah, yeah, go for it. Stuart, the handle of the cane um, mm. on the ultra cane, is it, and I suppose just as, as, a, as someone who's using a cane all the time, and uh, I, I use a... Um, I actually use um, a cane by a company called Swar Swarovski, so the handle is very, very thin. Is mm. the handle very chunky in your hand? I'm, just wondering, I'm, I'm wondering about the effect on your wrist, I suppose, with the wrist action. Well, now, I'm not the strongest person in the world by any means, Stuart, and, you know, it is a chunky handle, and some people, even a couple of rehab workers I've spoken to, it is chunky, um, but it needs, I think it kind of needs to be to hold all of the, you know, the, the, the tech, that, that's in there um, and some people have said it's heavy and I just it's a personal thing but I, I just don't see it at all okay. um, that's, that, that, that's maybe just me but you know, even Steve Nutt said it was heavy and I just thought mm, I don't quite agree with that but yeah and you would need to hold the ultra cane for those who could who could see I was holding the ultra cane in a slightly different method than I would be you know Stuart if you were holding your traditional cane Right. You know, usually, I think your pointer finger would usually be on, you know, the, the, the front part of the cane, whereas in my case, it's my thumb because it needs to be over the two tactile buttons to feel the vibrations. So um, it does take a wee bit of getting used to, but if you do have good mobility and orientation skills, um, I've really gotten to like it. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Stuart. Great. Um... I'm just responding to Diane in the chat box. I've just popped a link in the um, 
in the chat box, everybody, um, if you'd like to um, find our YouTube channel. Um, good. So Diane's also asked about the sizing, which you've already asked. It's not one size fits all. There are four different sizes, aren't there? Which you is that for the belt size? That's for the belt. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Good. And yeah. So we've got extra small, small, medium, and large. So large. Yeah. yeah, you have to. Uh, yeah, take a measurement there. Um, Marie has asked a fair few questions here. Um, Marie's a, a rehab worker at Site Scotland. Oh, good. She's a guide dog owner and a cane user. Um, how heavy is the belt? Do, do you have Do you have any any? I mean, uh, I, I did. It's it's really really not heavy at all. I mean, you, you don't even when I was holding it up to and there, you know, when at the initial demo there, Sam to let people see it. I mean. It's not heavy at all. I, I can't say how heavy it is. I did say that, but I mean, I get. I've actually, and I've forgot. It's around my waist at the moment, and I'm I'm sitting down, and I've it's, I've just forgotten to even take it off. That's how yeah. how lightweight it actually is. You know, it's so convenient to wear and yeah. so unobtrusive. It's unbelievable. Um, okay. If you do have questions on the weight, um, again, Steve Nutt is the c computer room services are the the supplier. So maybe we could put his contact details in. Yeah, um, as well, Sam. And Definitely. Yeah, we've got a few people asking about how to get hold of it as well, so we'll, yeah. we'll discuss that. Um, good. Um, Marie's also asked, can you wear it under a jacket, under clothing? Which, which... Interesting. Okay, so I didn't come to that. I was going to um, come to that then, but I'll, I'll say, say now. So um, the one thing you don't want to do when wearing it, you don't want to get the control box wet, even though it's in you know, a wee pocket. It is protected, but... If, if that control box gets wet, then obviously the whole navy belt is going to, you know, it's just going to die, unfortunately. Um, so when I first got it, I thought, uh oh, how is this going to work? Um, you know, so what I do is you're not supposed to wear it next to your bare skin. So, you know, don't put this under a, a, a shirt. I wouldn't put this under my T-shirt on my bare skin. That's, you know, field space are quite, um, you know, steady about that they, they don't want you wearing it on your bare skin but as long as it's on a layer of clothing is underneath it what you can then do is if you're out and about remember it's not sending out any obstacle detection waves or anything so if it rains and you know check the weather beforehand and if it's going to rain just put a jacket over the top and you're still going to feel it vibrating next to your skin anyway and you know that the belt's protected because of uh, the control box is protected because you've got a jacket you know, over the top of it anyway. Is that okay, Marie? Does that? Yeah, that's that's yeah. great. Thank you, Stuart. Um, she's also mentioned um, how it's it's uh, sort of reminds her a little bit of, of Soundscape, the app, the Microsoft app, um, ah, so which which gives when... similar feedback. And she's also mentioned um, uh, people who are maybe deaf blind as well who can't yes. hear the the Soundscape bleeps but could feel the vibrations of the Navi belt. That would so be that... absolutely ideal yeah. for anybody with a hearing impairment. The, the belt yeah. and the ultra cane would be absolutely ideal. And the thing I like about it is. Then, is, and I'll come to this when I get to the app part, you know, my phone is doing nothing. My hands, my right hand, you know, or my left hand, depending on what I'm using, absolutely free. And all I'm doing is just picking up the tactile vibrations through, you know, the, the belt. There's nothing more, you know, I'm not listening to anything. There's nothing on my head. It's just, it's one of the greatest experiences I've, I've ever had with one of these things. Um, yeah. And I did see in the... The, the demo that Steve Nutt did, which I'm sure is still available on the Sight and Sound um, webinar website as well. Um, I think it's a, bit, it's a bit like Soundscape around your waist, but obviously it does essentially the same thing. It just, you're not listening to any sounds. It's all through haptic feedback. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Um, we do have quite a few questions, so I'll whiz through these ones. Um, the, yeah, again, the supplier for the, for the Navi belt um, is is com our computer room services okay and, uh, we, uh, Steve Nutt who runs the, uh, it's the computer room services so we'll we'll put the details in there for everybody at the end of the session um, so if you are interested in in having a demo seeing it live then yeah they they would be the guys to speak to um, should maybe say Sam just before you, you go in with the questions the problem is going to, I haven't came to I didn't come to it in the beginning because I didn't want people to go God um, the price. Um, I paid um, 19, 1995 for the belt when I, I first bought it. Um, it has gone up in price. I checked it this morning, and now on um, the Computer Room Services website, it is now £2,394, um, from what I can see 
on the website. So it is a bit of an investment, but again, I wouldn't be endorsing it if I thought if I didn't think it was any. I actually, it's one of these rare devices. I actually, I've gotten my money's worth out of it already. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank, well, thank you. Um, so, yeah, yeah. A few people asking about price as well. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, two, you. three, nine, four um, yeah. at the moment. Um, and you can find out all the information on the Computer Room Services website. Um, good. Um, how do you charge it, Stuart? Did oh, sorry, that? I didn't say. So um, there's a, a charge on the control box um, on the, the very top. There's a, a charging slot on the right hand side. And it's a micro USB. It's not USB C, but it, I, I'd like it to be USB C, but it doesn't really matter. It still charges within one or two hours. So if you have a micro USB C cable, just plug one end into the, the charging port that's on the top of the control box on the right hand side, um, and then just let it, you know, charge away. Excellent. And uh, what else have we got? We've got. Um... Balance. How is the balance of the ultra cane? Paul has asked. Um, yeah, um, is, is, is the, again, the sort of weight, the weight balance of it? Is it quite the weight balance is absolutely fit. Again, I wouldn't be using it if you know, as when I'm sweeping it from side to side, Paul, I'm feeling absolutely no um imbalance um whatsoever. So I don't know whether they, they've, there's maybe something in the handle that. Um, cuts that that counterbalance out, but certainly I, I don't find any. I just think I'm using a traditional cane as just with an upgrade, basically, is the way I can describe it. So no balance issues at all. Okay, good. Um, Diane's asked, can you set? Can you have the ultra cane set to only detect things at head height? No, no. Right. I, I, there's no other. Sorry, that's a short answer, but no. Fine. Um, has the uh, has the ultra cane um, developed in recent years? Do you know, Stuart? Has it, has it hasn't. It... No. no. Um, okay. Incidentally, if you just want something that's going to direct um, things at head height, that I've recently purchased. This is for another day, but I have recently purchased the WeWalk smart cane as well, and that would be um, that would only detect things at head height. Fine. Okay. Good. Yeah. Diane has mentioned that she also found that it was it was the ultra cane was quite heavy, and she also said that if it was pointing if if she wasn't pointing the sensors in the right direction, it told her things that she didn't need to know about. I don't know if you found. All about your, yeah, I mean, there is a bit of a technique with the, the ultra cane, and I have found that would be the same with the wee, you know the wee walk as well. With, with these things, you really do need to have the, the sensor angled correctly. You know, your hand position needs to be spot on. So you know they do have their drawbacks. I'm not I'm not you know saying the ultra cane's the best thing in the world. I much prefer the navy belt. But um, the, the thing I don't like about them as well is they're not waterproof. The same with the wee walk. So yeah. if I'm out and about and if, and it rains, then I'm going to have to turn that cane off sharpish or it's going to wreck all the. Um, Oh, sorry, just Jaws is doing something there. Um, so if, if that cane um, is it's activated, voice and, and Jaws for sorry, so I'm going to say. Um, so yeah, if, if it rains, I've got to turn that thing off sharpish. The same with the wee walk or the electronics may be damaged. But again, you could still, if you can cover the sensors up, you can still use it as a normal traditional cane. Yeah. Um, but the fact that they're not waterproof is a bit annoying. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. It's good to, to to you know to look at the sort of uh, the, the pros and cons as well. And um, good. Uh, Marie has asked, how difficult was it to learn to coordinate using both devices together, the Navi Belt and the Ultra Cane? Um, it wasn't too bad because I've been using an Ultra Cane a lot longer than I have the, the Navi Belt. So I already knew how to use the Ultra Cane, and because I was so used to using the Navi Belt alongside my guide dog. Um, having the two combined wasn't actually that much of, of an issue because I was so used, I'm not, I'm feeling the vibrations through my hand on the ultra cane and on my thumb and uh, I'm feeling the, the vibrations through the belt on the waist. So while they, it's like they're synced together, you know, they are two very, very different devices. I'm just using the devices, you know, I'm just using the two of them um, to, to meet my needs. And I actually found that I was a wee bit slow to start with, but once I got going, I actually found I was walking at quite a, a steady speed with the, the, the both devices. And that's not like me, you know, with a traditional cane. So I'm definitely seeing more benefits than drawbacks. 
Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what what uh, what was the cost of the ultra cane? Uh, quickly. Uh, I, I think it's five hundred and four. It was five hundred and forty um, when I, I bought it, but that was a wee while ago, and I couldn't find any prices on the, their website. They're asking you to contact them directly mm -hmm. um, at the moment, so I don't know what's happening there. Okay, we can we can double check that, but yeah. Um, we can put the, I've gave the contact details, right? so we could put all the information in at the end if you like as well, Sam. Great. Yeah, perfect. Um, Carla, morning Carla, she's asked, when using the devices, um, yeah, obviously when using both devices that, that, that vibrate, um, if you were on a regular route that you do from day to day, are you able to um, switch off the vibrations or are you able to sort of um, ignore you are vibrations? yes you are so again it all depends on your personal preference you know you, you could pause the the navi belt or you know you can do something in the app that i will i'll show you in a second um and with the ultra cane again you, you can just turn the thing off and use it as a normal cane as well you know so you have mm -hmm. complete control of the haptic feedback to a certain to really through everything on the navi belt and to a certain extent on the, the ultra cane as well so again it's all down to personal preference but we, they can be modified and controlled excellent thank you and um diane has asked when the ultra cane detects something at head height how much does it vibrate and what sort of things at head height would make it vibrate how sensitive is it so you, you'd have you know, very, very big obstacle, you know, so say there's like a, a, a sign, you know, an overhanging sign above your head that I've had those before, unfortunately, it's going to pick these up, um, depending on, as I say, if I've got it set to either two metres or four metres, depending on the, the setting I've got it. <clears throat> and as soon as it comes into range of that, um, say, the sign, um, then it will start, you will feel a kind of slow, you know, con, you know, sort of pulsing vibration to let you know, yeah, I've picked up something, but it's quite, it's a wee bit away yet. But then the closer you get to the vibration, when you sweep it back again in the same direction as the sign, um, if it picks it up a lot closer, it's going to vibrate a lot quicker. Um, so in, in that scenario, I would be avoiding you know, the, the faster the vibration is, the closer you are to the object at head height and at ground height. So again, I would be either stopping and changing direction or I would be being very, very careful um, on what I was doing with the, the ultra cane at that point. I mean, again, I think with the ultra cane as well, Sam, you're not going to know how good it is until you actually get up. I'm doing my best to demo it, um, you know, from home at the moment. And you're, you're not going to really get a feel for it until you try it yourself, I think. But hopefully that answers your question, Diane. And in terms of, I said at the start, um, it even picks things up like overhanging branches at head height. So as I said, when I was taking my guide dog up the woods when I worked from the office in Kirkcaldy, um, I used this every day because when I didn't have the ultra cane, I was banging my head off every tree branch and, you know, twig that was above my head um, or at head height. And now I, didn't, I don't do that because I've got the ultra cane and it is picking up even something as um, slim as, as you know, twigs and overhanging um, trees. So again, when that happens, I just take a step to the side and just continue on because I know there's something coming up. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, good. We've got lots, lots more here. Um, but we've got. Let me, let me see. Uh, Andrea, morning, Andrea. She's asked. Um, she said, am I right in assuming that when the Navi Belt is assisting with crossing roads in a straight line, this would only be effective if the person has the cane skills to determine that they are facing straight across the road in the first yeah, place? Yeah, I, I did say that. As, yeah. So yeah. basically, you would say you were, you're doing an indent. So you'd go around the corner, with even with the ultra, any cane, you know, you'd go around, the, even with the guide dog as well, you know, you'd have to go around the corner and indent properly. So you need your cane skills. Um, but then once you think you're in or you know you're in, on the straight line, that's when you press that compass button twice and then the belt will always keep you in that straight line until you press the button, the, the pause button again to stop it. Brilliant. And Deirdre, morning Deirdre, has asked, what age would you recommend a Navi belt? How, how, how young 
um, would, would a uh, user be able to? What a question. Um, from? I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, there's there's kids at the moment in school that I, I know would absolutely love this thing. And, you know, they, they're maybe from, I, I would say they were teenagers. I, I don't know that I would recommend it to anybody younger than maybe 11, but it's, it's hard to say, you know, it, it's such an individual piece of kit and it's such a personal piece of kit that people's not going to, I, I've said, I know I'm repeating myself, but people's not going to know until they try it. But I think I, I would recommend it to people um, in high school and above. That's maybe a good way of, of putting it. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, very good. A couple more. John has asked if we can email the uh, details for both devices. Yes, John, we can do that. No problem. Um, Excellent. Uh, da, 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 da. And finally, um, oh, um, do we know? Again, just just remind everybody this uh, the um, the main supplier for for the UltraCane, uh, Stuart. Um, I mean, it's UltraCane themselves. So if yeah. you just go to ultracane.com, you'll find everything there. Um, Great. Thank you for confirming that. And. Yeah, finally, uh, well, I said, uh, oh, would it pick up um, sort of a van door or a, or a, or a boot a boot lid, a boot door on a car? Would it pick up something quite should narrow? Yeah, 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 it should do yeah. because I, that, that's quite a solid, you know, um, object. So that it yeah. should pick that up with absolutely no issue at all. Um, it would even do ascend. I've even had it do ascending stairs. It won't do descending stairs, obviously, because it's a you know a drop down. Um, but you know, any even things like ascending stairs, it would do it no problem. Thank you. Well, interestingly, Martin, thanks, Martin, for that. Martin's just said that the Ultra Cane sets off security systems in shopping centres, so it does need to be turned off. And that it also to me. it also has a problem picking up glass surfaces. That's that's Martin's experience. I don't know if you've mm, a similar. Okay. No, you've uh, not. I didn't encountered. know that one. Thanks, Martin. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that. Yeah. That'd be interesting to know if, if anybody else has had that experience, uh, or whether it's just a, a faulty, a faulty unit, Martin. But who knows? Um, I guess we can. Yeah, we can find that out. Um, but it'd be interesting to know if anybody else has come across that. Um, good. And Paul said the Ultra Cane. Um, yes. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thanks, Paul. He's just, just, just confirming the Ultra Cane is an electronic, electronic mobility aid for use by visually impaired. Um, good. And he's. Pop the price in there as well. Um, oh, 500, 590 uh, pounds currently. Oh, it's for up. The oh, ultra right. cane. Yeah. So thanks, thanks, Paul. Um, good. All right. That's 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 it for now, uh, Stuart. So. Um, um, are we okay? I've, I've, we've really went over time, haven't we? Um, we've, um, yeah, we've, we're running, uh, but but you know. Um, it, can yeah. we carry up? Because I really want to show the if people are interested in hanging around anyway. I'm happy to. Yeah, yeah. You got the cane shows, haven't you? So. Yeah, well, I've got the I've got the app to show you the app as well. Sorry, with the, the Navi belt. So I'll, yep. I'll leave the ultra cane just now because I think people's got the main yep. idea of it. But we'll just go with the, <clears throat> the the because this is what I really wanted to get to. So again, Sam, we'll just do some um, tweaking. Are we all right. You could actually yeah. just 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 tilt it up. Slightly. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a bit too far. Just a little bit. There you go. Let's try that. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's get the belt back on. Um, so when I wasn't using the belt there, I turned it off. Now, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is go into the actual field space companion app, which is free. Um, and it's available on both iOS and Android devices, and it's the companion app for the Navi belt. Now, what I've been told, I, I make no, apology, I, I, no apologies for it. I'm Apple through and through, so I haven't tested this on Android, but I've been told that in terms of Android, the accessibility on this companion app is not good, so feel free to test this. Um, even if you don't have an AVI belt and you have an Android or iOS device, um, you can test the app anyway. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got it downloaded and, you know, everything's ready to go. So I'm going to turn the voice over up as well. 
So I'm on the Feel Space app, and I'm going to go into the app, and I'm just going to go through what it can do when it's not connected to a Navi belt, because you can use this as a standalone navigation aid, because on iOS, it uses the Apple Maps API, and on Android, don't quote me on it, but I believe it uses the Google Maps API. And what they seem to have done is they seem to have really slimmed down, especially um, on the iOS side, the Apple Maps, there's a lot of stuff taken away. They've really, really slimmed down um, the Apple Maps version to suit their own requirements. And it's really, really simple and straightforward to use. Now, I have blacked out my screen on the iPhone, Sam, and hope nobody minds. It's just basically there are confidential addresses and things in here that I really don't want, um, you know, to, to go out. So... Um, just, for, just for privacy, I've, I've blacked the screen. Um, so on the app, when I first go in, um, there's three tabs along the bottom. So from left to right, we have... So we've got the map. We have... We've got destination and the final one... Is settings and settings really there's not really much point in going in there the only things you can really do in settings is um change the, the vibration of the belt feedback from the belt through the phone and you could get your battery percentage um if required from there as well and the rest of it's the only, only other thing is you can get the user guide so i'm not going to bother with the settings but because of time but um on the on the home tab so let me just check i've got the home tab selected selected uh, the, the map tab, I beg your pardon, not the home tab, the map tab. What I can do from the top. Field space and destination selected. Read current address. Button. So that's read current address is <clears throat> basically like a, a where am I? So if I was to tap that, but double tap that where am um, you know, read current address button now, it would tell me exactly where I was. Um, but I don't really use that much because I've got the, the Navi belt on anyway. And the next one, I don't <clears throat> bookmark, be quiet, bookmark your current location. And this is a really cool feature because um, on the maps, it doesn't really have my local bus stops or anything. So when I'm walking up the street, if I pass a bus stop, I think, oh yeah, I actually, I use this bus stop a lot and it's not on the map. What I can do is then I could tap the bookmark your current location, bookmark your current location and then I can, you know, name the, the landmark. So, you know, bus stop one or, you know, bus stop two Kirkcaldy, for example. And then I can save that location. And then anytime I'm approaching that location in the future, I'll be informed that I'm approaching that bus stop. So that's really cool. Anything else in here? <coughs> No, pardon me. So that is the, basically that song you've got in that map tab. There, there's nothing else to worry about in there. <clears throat> the more important one for me is the second tab of the three um, on the bottom in the middle, which is... Destination. So we've got destination. So if I go in here with a double tap... <clears throat> destination. Heading. Now, what this allows me to do is I'll just go through the options. Define the destination using an address. Button. So define the destination route using an address. So in here, I could go in there and type in something like, in fact, let's do it. I'm going and I'm just very, very quickly type. Cabin, I'll type um, 92. Eight, nine, 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 Five, 95, five, and space, we'll do numbers, High Street. So I've typed 95 High Street, and then down at the bottom in the right hand corner, there is search. So you've got a search. Please wait. So it's looking five, for the address. Search 95 High Street, search field, 95 High Saint, 95 High Saint, Lock Gully. So it says 95 High Saint, that's a voiceover, an, an annoying voiceover issue. But what it's done is it's found 
95 High Street, North Kelly. So it's found the exact address I typed in. So <clears throat> because I, I'm in North Kelly, that, that's the, a small town in Fife where I live, if I now double tap on that 95 High Street, what I can do is, destination details, heading. you've got destination details, and if I keep scrolling to the right, 95 High Street, 0 0.6 miles. So it's telling me it's 0 0.6 miles away. And remember at this point, I'm not connected yet to the Navi Bell. This is all done through the, the Field Space app. 95 High Street, Lock Gilly, KY5, 9LW. So that's start. the postcode, Scotland. Start. So I can start the navigation using the Navi Belt or Routing turn by turn. Add favourite. I can add it as a favourite. So if I wanted to use that destination, um, you know, on a regular basis, I could add that as an actual landmark and it would appear in my favourites list. Sorry, Sam, were you come? Did you want to come in on? No. No, no, that's fine. No, sorry, that's my fault. Um, so, if I was to do, I want to start the navigation because I want to get to 95 High Street. That's where I want the belt to take me to. But before I do, if I go to the right, so you've actually got four, four different navigation modes you can use. And on mine at the moment, it's set to routing turn by turn. And what that means is, in that mode, when the Navi Belt is taking me to 95 High Street, it's always going to tell me the exact direction to go in using a continuous vibration. So when I need to go in a straight line, um, you know, go straight ahead, I will feel a continuous vibration in that centre point of, you know, my stomach again, where the green tag is. And when I, want, I need to turn left or right, the vibration will actually change and then it will vibrate in the exact direction I need to turn. So it's a really, really comprehensive, um, you know, way of doing it. You know, you're just feeling again the direction you need to go and the turn by turn as you approach um, each turn, right, left, etc. And <clears throat> what I really like about it is, if for any reason I get completely lost and I go, you know, way off the mark with it, what happens is it will actually reroute. I don't need to do anything. It will know automatically that I've gone offline and then it will actually reroute itself and actually get me back on track using another, you know, another, you know, more specific, specific route. So it's a really, really fascinating way of doing things, isn't it? And <clears throat> a quick tip, if I just come out of um, the, that address at the moment. Destination. If I go back into the destination search, tab, search, desk, 95, ice, 90 fox, turn by turn. I'm just going to clear this destination. So what it does, again, I've got my screen blank, but <clears throat> in fact, I won't go into it, but again, I do have a list of favourites <clears throat> in there as well under the destination tab. Um, I'm just going to sit back down again, Sam. You all right with? Yeah, great. So what it what I can do is I can go into, you have what's called a favourites list. And what that does is every favourite I have um, landmarked, I can actually then, you know, go in there and actually pick out, a, a, you know, a favourite and then I can just get the belt to take me to that specific destination. So a tip using, using any um, mapping up, whether it's soundscape, whether it's blind square, um, you know, whether it's field space with the, the, the Navi belt, mark all of the destinations you want to go to in advance. So I have everything in there. I've got my mum and dad's address. I have my home address. I have Baines the Bakers. I have, you know, diff three different pubs. I really shouldn't admit that, but I do. Um, you know, I have the local co-op, um, the Loch Gelly Centre, the golf club, ev every, the, the doctors, the dentist, everything in Loch Gelly where I live that I need to, to get to, I have earmarked already in my favourites. And just as a final um, point, because I'm aware that time's getting on, 
just to, to show you how you know confident I've, I've become with this thing. My mum and dad were in Blackpool and I haven't been I hadn't been keeping too well um, recently, and they went to Blackpool and they left me on my own. And again, I had a prescription ready, and the, the chemist had actually changed its location in Lochgelly, and I thought, oh no, how am I going to how am I going to get this prescription? I've nobody to to go and get it for me. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use this, this navy belt and see if it'll get me to where I need to go. So I put in um, the name of the pharmacy and it got the right one. And I said, right, take me, route me turn by turn um, to the pharmacy in Loch Gailey. And it got me within maybe five metres of the destination. And then what it does is when you get to the destination, again, it vibrates on your front and back and it vibrates on both sides of you as well. So you feel four different vibrations at the same time. And that means you've gotten to your specific destination using the belt. And interestingly, I have an Apple Watch on. I did get a notification on the Apple Watch as well. Um, and then all I needed to do was tell my dog, OK, find the step. And it found the, he found the step to the chemist and I was able to go in and get you know, my prescription. And I had no idea where the chemist was. I just, I went with it with the Navi belt and my guide dog. So hopefully that shows you using this belt and trusting it. I think you've got to learn to trust it over time, but it really is going to, to benefit you um, in the long term. So um, I'll stop again, Sam, because I'm aware of time. So I'll, I'll stop at the moment. No problem. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, really useful um, look at the the companion app as well so um i mean really, yeah. try it if anybody's still around try it without the navi belt because you will hear turn by turn directions through your, your phone as well you know it's just a very very simple app that does everything you'd expect from a blind friendly um navigation app it's just obviously you don't have the the, the feeling of the navi belt great and um yeah, lots, lots more questions uh, coming in. Um, yeah, the I'm app. I haven't covered everything, but no, 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 it's fine. The the, the field space app, Stuart. Um, mm -hmm. It is free, isn't it? Uh, as yes, a standalone. Yeah, yeah, it's free app. to download. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's free, free as a standalone app. Um, yes. You don't have to pair it to the Navi Belt um, to, yeah. to benefit from the navigation. Um, yeah, don't have to. Um, as as I say, try it. You know out and um, you know leave the settings tab alone because you don't need to go in there because that's for the navy belt. But if you stick to the map and the destination tab, you really should get good results. And as I say, with iOS, it uses Apple Maps, and it's honest, quite honestly, the best navigation app and the best navigation experience with the belt I've ever used with a, a navigation app and system. Mm -hmm. And Marie, actually, who's a rehab worker has, has, has sort of endorsed the the app as well she said that the the, the bookmark location is brilliant um she said it's a game it's a game changer so there you go thanks murray um good uh da, 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 da. Oh, a few people have asked about you know your trip to the pharmacy were there any roads on the route to the pharmacy um yes so yes there were oh, yeah wow um at yes. least four at least four um roads yeah. now because i had my guide dog again going in the straight line wasn't really wasn't really a, a, an issue but as i say I, i've tried and tested um going in the straight line and i've very you know very very short walks so far and believe me it does it does work and even because of the 16 different motors even if you go very very slightly offline you're going to know very quickly and it's just a case of turning and you know, getting back on that, like that central line. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And, um, yeah, and then Deirdre's just, yeah, thank, as, as thanked you for a great demonstration. They had, uh, she's had to shoot off, but, uh, yes, thank you, Deirdre. Not um, and lots of people are downloading the app oh, already, good. which is good. good. This has been a worthwhile, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Just quickly going back to the Navi belt, um, mm -hmm. Tam, Tamara has asked, and um, it's a bit of a tricky question, this one, so you may not be able to answer it, but um, do you know if the Navi Belt would be, if the, 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 the technology it uses, would it be safe for somebody who has a pacemaker, for instance? Now, I suppose that's something we can we can maybe do um, some. Um, I'd, now, I think, I can't remember if there was something in this, in the user guide, that there are a few 
um, things in the user guide about safety um, yeah. at, at the front. So it's maybe worth going. Um, I mean, uh, uh, I suppose uh, we could go direct one. to to they, field space for that, wouldn't we? I it's... think you you need to download the user guide or ask Steve at Computer Room Services because I think yeah. Field Space did put a few things in because you know it was haptic feedback. So I think they're covering themselves in. And yeah. a lot of different scenarios. So that that is a tricky. I, I would maybe, I'd maybe yeah. be careful with that one. Just to yeah. on the safe side. Definitely. Yeah. We. It, to, yeah. Tam, uh, tomorrow. Thank, thanks for that question. Um, because yeah. the vibrations can go. I mean, I've I've had to turn my vibration down because it, it really can vibrate at a powerful, you know, yeah. level as well. So you do need to be careful. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, but we would re definitely suggest um, checking with either computer room services or yeah. with field space directly. The best one, if you email info at fieldspace.com, um, they'd be able to, um, you know, so give you an answer, I would think, there. Right. Okay. Thank you, Stuart. That, that, that is everything that we've covered. Thanks so much, everyone, for all your comments and questions. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a Just going fascinating to session. Off, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can relax now, Stuart. Uh, yeah, there's been so much packed into that that, that demonstration. So um, yeah, fa fa a massive thank you to Stuart Beveridge for for leading that for us. Um, yeah, as as we as we mentioned earlier, um, the Navi Belt is available from Computer Room Services. So you can go on their website. You'll find all their contact details. Um, the Ultra Cane, obviously directly from Ultra Cane themselves, and the companion app for the Navi Belt is called Feel Space. And that can be downloaded from either the Android, uh, so the Google Play Store, or the the App Apple Store as well. Um, very good. Any questions? Again, just I think my email address is usually in the contact details. So any questions you've got, just ping my email, and I'm happy to respond as well. Yeah, good stuff. And thanks for everybody that's 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 hung around. Um, before I hand over to Stuart, Stuart Lawler for for this mystery. Um, yeah, surprise. He's getting nervous. That, He's getting nervous <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just I, I just don't want to. Yeah, big big thanks to everyone for joining us. And uh, yeah, the the social hub will be back in two weeks' time. Uh, two weeks today. On that, uh, let me just check the date of that. That's the nineteenth. Um, and we will have a webinar Wednesday session as well, Stuart Lawler as well. Is that right? On uh, there's actually a whole load of things happening next week. Yeah, very yes. busy. We have a um, a Vispero series of webinars there's one every day next week um, and uh yeah there'll be some changes then coming to webinars and social hub and we can talk a bit more about that as well excellent yeah okay good thank you well over to you Stuart Lola, for, for, for the <laughs> okay so um Stuart Beveridge and myself and first of all by the way Stuart thank you that was a great great session I think we need to bring you in to do a session on the WeWalk after that Mm. So yeah, maybe that'll be a quite one. Um, it was really, really good. Look, uh, today is a very special social hub session because it's actually Sam Colson's last day with us, uh, as in last day with the social hub. Sam is moving on to new things from Sight and Sound, and we're going to miss him a lot. I think it's fair to say that the social hub has blossomed as a forum that Sight and Sound have used since I think it started in April of last year. And uh, I think Sam, well, I know, in fact, Sam and Stuart have been the driving force behind that every two weeks, um, religiously turning up with some really great content. And the ones I've been here to see have been really, really interesting. Sam, we couldn't let you go without marking the occasion. And uh, <laughs> Stuart Beveridge, uh, very kindly, and myself sat down the other day and said, what can we do? We couldn't do video, but we did produce a little audio montage for you um. of some of your best bits of the social hub. So wow. uh, sit back, everyone. This is four minutes, 28 seconds <laughs> <laughs> for Sam Colson. <laughs> wow. um, uh, so just bear with us whilst I set this up. And we're going to. Um... No one would be offended if, if anybody needs to get back to work. It's uh... don't say that to them. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to. Uh, when I get my sharing sorted out, apologies. Um, 
Okay, so have a listen to uh, eight or, so, or four or so minutes of Sam Col Colson's best bits, best bits on the AT Social Hub. Hope you're hearing that okay. I'm not getting the audio yet. No, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything. No, no audio, right? This was this is this is this is not meant to happen. But let me try this again. <laughs> to be honest, it's it's, it's probably um, probably doing everyone a favour. Nobody needs to listen right, to it let anymore. Me, let me but... let me try this again. Um, <laughs> right, let's try it again. You getting anything now? Mm, no, are you sorry? Nothing. No, uh, okay. is that the com sometimes it's the computer sound check box, isn't it? Yep. Have that. Check. Let me try once more. Uh, Technology. Yeah. And take it and take it again just in case. And just one sec. Okay. Try once more, guys. So I was muted then. Wow, thanks so yeah. much. I mean, that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I thanks everybody who's hung around to listen to that. That's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, no, guys, no, I really appreciate it. I mean, that's, you know, just a, a snippet of, of, of some of the work that we've all done. Um, but yeah, yeah, just, just to finally say, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I mean, get, getting this off the ground at the start of, of the first lockdown last March, um, you know, we, we I was actually looking through some old um, sort of uh, mailing lists and, and whatnot, material, marketing material, prom promotional stuff that we sent out, you know, and we started with, you know, sort of a pool of around 15 people who were very dedicated and used to come along and, you know, and then we've, we've grown and grown and we've had sessions that have, have attracted over 300 uh, people and, and you know we've reached the masses and we've 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 you know we really have sort of um yeah we've spread the word we've flown the flag um and hopefully we've we've really helped and you know guided and supported a lot a lot of people but you know i i'm only a, a small cog in that machine uh stuart stuart beverage is a massive been a massive part of this as well as stuart lawler and our marketing team at sight and sound as well fanula and angus and everybody else so thank you it's been a real pleasure and I'm leaving the social hub in such safe hands with the two Stuarts um, and I'm, I'll absolutely be back and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where the social hub goes and how it grows and develops from here. So thank you again. I really appreciate that guys and uh, good luck. <laughs> all right. Thanks a million, Sam. Uh, <laughs> and all the best for the future. And thank you, Stuart, as always. Yeah. Um, Pleasure as always. <clears throat> Stuart, we'll, be, we'll be back with these guys in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, as I say, and we'll have some discussions as well, Stuart, about what we're, we're going to do going forward. So hopefully we're, we're, we're going to be rolling on. We Absolutely. are indeed. Uh, you're, you're after handing over the social hub uh, baby, Sam. So Stuart, I know. The, first, the first week of night feeds is, is you, Stuart. Right? Like, yeah, <laughs> like a proud parent. Um, it's, uh, yeah, emotional. No, it's great. Thanks so much, Stuart. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Take care. Yeah, good luck. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. See you later. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.